heart of Falcon Prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, yes, that you're already Lord. in this place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to lead the way tonight, Lord God, and then, Lord God, that we have the privilege, Lord God, to be in your presence, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for all you've done for us. And Lord God, be with us throughout the service, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Be sure and put that on. No, that's not me. That's somebody else.
think about it. And if, if you can, just just lift your hands in unison. Let's just be one man in the court tonight. Let's lift our hands tonight. And close your eyes. Don't, don't, you don't have to worry about anybody looking at you. Just close your eyes. Sing it to the Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. So good, church.
church. Hallelujah. So many of us have been broken. Yes, we have. Yes. So many of us have been hurt. Mm -hmm. So many of us have been torn apart and put back together and torn apart and put back together and that knows me. I really didn't feel like I was going to live past 25. And it wasn't because I was wanting to kill myself. It's just because I was trying to kill myself by doing stupid stuff. Flipping out of trucks and just, well, slipping from the door into the back of the truck and 70 miles an hour. But anyway, just stupid stuff. And, and all my friends that were really concerned about me, but they didn't really know how to talk to me. But it's kind of weird. It was a kind of a double catch there because when I quit drinking, they, uh, well, they were very proud of me. They were, they were really were excited that I'll quit because this little man, he might live to be 30 instead of 25. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, uh, they were very, they were happy for me, but it's like they lost their camaraderie with me because I was serving Jesus and in love with Jesus so much. And it didn't matter to me what people thought about me. I mean, have you ever been at a party and they ask you to leave? Yeah, that was me. I was Bobby Buzzkill. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like a, I don't, God had to bring me full circle church. Same thing with Tommy, you know, it's like a, uh, it's just, when you sing that song, that song just blows me away because that's me. Amen. All of us. And every one of us have a story. Yes, we do. Every yes, single do. one of us have a story. And I praise God for uh, moms. I mean, she never went out and did all that crazy stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And, and my son, same thing. You know, it's like, um, and they said, well, you got to go out and get a testimony, you know. Um, no, you don't. You don't have to do that. The very best testimony that you could have said, I never had to experience that because Jesus kept me from all that. To me. But if you have experienced it, well, hey, God can put you back together like you never thought you could <coughs> And so many of us endure pain in different ways, you know? I mean, mine was in that craziness and just feeling like I didn't care. I didn't care about anybody or anything. Yeah. And uh, so with you, it might be you're drawn, withdrawn within yourself to where you don't want to talk to people. You don't want to see people. Um, some people don't like themselves, and so they bury themselves. Whatever it may be, church, God can take the broken pieces. You know, brother, you know, brother the way I like to describe it is like a piece of clay on there. And then you get, it starts doing this, and all like that, and Jesus comes along and says, and, and then you're perfect. And you're straight, and you're spinning straight around. And then you get tired of running against the wind and you run with the wind. The wind of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's so, awesome. <laughs> when Jesus died for us, can you put that, that verse up again, that chorus, or that bridge, I guess it is. It's the one where it says, I can see you, Jesus. I can see you being put on that cross. Amen. I can see you put on that cross for me. You know, I love what Mel Gibson did. He had his hand in there, just his hand, driving the nails. And it was like, he said, I did that because I wanted people to know that I was one that drove the nails. I was one of those. And I can say I am one of those that drove the nails into Jesus' hands. Everyone sitting here, we helped drive the nails into Jesus' hands and feet. We helped put the crown thorns on his head, church. Hallelujah. And he did that for us in the love. I can see the love in your eyes 
Lay yourself down. Raising up the broken. <laughs> we're so broken, church. But God raised you back. I am a miracle. And you are too. Every yes, one God. of you are in here are miracles. Or your potential miracles. You, you never know. I mean, some, and I said, oh, oh, God can never touch me. And never, God can never reach me. I said that myself. But he did. So, let's just, let's just sing that one more time. This, this is right here. Oh, I can see it. When I acquire a photo re and sita and the la quaya shiri kotamana de diaba sopora, nekian hante. Fute shetrava da poma el shi. Bob and the sita tra shekwe sita. Rapa yeshu and you in your pain. 
I see you in your struggle. I see you wanting to pine away. I see you in your hurt. But I say unto you, I am your healer. I am your peace. I am your love. I am all that you need. I am your everything. Would you reach out to me and say, I need you. I need you more than I need breath itself. I need you, Lord. I need you in my life. Will you say that to me? Can you say, I am undone. I am incomplete without you, Lord. Will you say that to me? I love you so much. I died for you. I gave all for you. Will you give yourself unto me? Say it, Lord. that wonderful God would speak to us. The King and the maker of everything we see, the whole universe would come down yes. here tonight and speak to us. What an honor that is, y'all. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Amen. It has been recording every time this happens, for some reason or the other. So it's very important that we listen to what God has to say and take heed yes. and it'll be, it'll be obedient. Amen. He tells you to come forward with something, do it because he's got healing. Yes. He's the one that has your salvation, your healing, your peace. Your joy, everything is in Him, y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. <clears throat> Proverbs 3.25 through 26. Women have a self-confidence problem. And when I read that, I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, we do, God. We lack the confidence that mean men seem to have in droves. This lack of confidence, though, isn't confined to women who walk the corridors of power in Washington or occupy corner offices in corporate America. Indeed, if those women struggle, just imagine what it's like for the rest of us. You've undoubtedly sensed those disquieting emotions gnawing at the pit of your stomach, the hesitancy, hesitancy, 
tendency to speak up for fear that you'll embarrass yourself or say something silly. That's me. <laughs> the reluctance to volunteer for a position because you're afraid you'll disappoint. The agonizing distress that someone will poke a hole through your fragile veneer and discover that you're an imposter. These feelings are inside us all. We just keep them stuffed down where no one can see. Whether you are white collar or blue, boardroom or mudroom, skyscraper or barn, spikes or sandals, designer or thrift, petite or plus, pop or hip hop, salad or steak, grease or ram, whether you spend your day changing dirty diapers or negotiating corporate deals, Chances are you also struggle with insecurities, fears, and self-doubt. <clears throat> the anonym of confidence is diffidence. You may not have heard that word before. It's an old-fashioned word that's largely absent from popular vernacular. Nowadays, most people use the word insecure instead. But diffidence is an important word to know when studying confidence. That's because confidence and diffidence are mirror opposites of each other. Confident and diffident both trace back to the Latin verb fidir, which means to trust. Both have to do with the amount of trust a person places in something or someone. The word confident adds the intensifying prefix con, which means plenty of, whereas diffident adds the prefix dis, which means the absence of. Confidence means that someone has plenty of trust. <clears throat> wow. Diffidence means she has an absence of trust. Mm. Both words have been used since about the 15th century and usually reference to how much trust a person places in him or himself. Confident people place plenty of trust in themselves, diffident people don't. When it comes to their own ability, they lack trust. Confident women are lion-hearted, diffident women are mousy and sheepish. Confident women act in a bold manner, diffident women remain paralyzed by fear. Confident women dare, diffident women don't. Which, which woman or type of woman would you rather be? Um, the confident woman? <laughs> Captain Obvious? Of course you want to be a confident woman and not a diffident one. I want to be a confident woman. I want my daughters and my granddaughters to be confident women. I want my friends to be confident women. And I want you to be a confident woman. The question is how. How do you transform your can't do into a can do? How do you turn your cowardice into bravery? Telling a woman who feels diffident to just be more confident is like telling an emancipated refugee, just eat more. It doesn't work. The refugee needs to find a safe haven and a good reliable food source before she can sink her teeth into something that'll satisfy her hunger. We cannot deal with our lack of confidence by simply revolving, resolving to be more confident. Looking within, as self-experts advise us to do, <clears throat> is a nonsensical solution. The reason we're looking for more confidence is that those cupboards are bare. We've discovered that confidence comes from the Latin word, which means plenty of trust or firmly trusting. The concept of, tr of trust is central to the Bible's view of confidence. So central that it uses the words trust and confidence interchangeably. Confidence means trust, trust means confidence. There's something else super interesting about Job 31, 24. Here Job used a type of Hebrew poetry called parallelism. That means that the two lines mimic each other. The second line says the exact same thing as the first, albeit in a slightly different way. The parallelism reinforces the fact that making, go making gold your trust and calling it your confidence means the same thing. Confidence means trust, and trust means confidence. In the first line in Job 31:24, Job, sorry, let me restart that. The first line in Job 31:24 does use a slightly different Hebrew word for trust, confidence than the second. This is also significant. The word in the first line, hesel, means trust or confidence. The word in the second line, mipta, means the object of one's trust or confidence. Why is this significant? because it indicates the Bible views confidence in the object or source that confidence is inseparably linked. The Bible's code for confidence is based on where I actually put my trust and not on my emotions. 
It doesn't matter how bold or feel fearful I may fear, may feel. I may possess all the positive energy and confidence in the world, but if my trust is misplaced, that confidence is foolish and fragile. On the other hand, even when I feel afraid, I can choose to embrace smart, strong confidence, as the psalmist declared. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. So I thought, <clears throat> after reading this, I thought, you know, Lord, we're to rise up. That means be confident. Be lack of fear, because he didn't give us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. So, <laughs> at this time, how would you guys like to find out who the confident winner of our basket is? Are we ready? Who are you going to choose to draw? I think Jeff should draw. You think Jeff should draw? Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Jeff. Okay, that's all right. Jeff. Sorry. The shame. The shame. Exodus chapter 3, Moses, it says, went to the backside of the desert. And the Lord told Moses to remove his shoes, for he was on holy ground. And this is the song the Lord told me to sing this weekend, because it's time, church, that we go and rise up and go to a place of holiness, which is by our Father God. Amen.
when we're together and someone has to go to the ladies' restroom, what do we say? Do you have to go to the restroom? Yeah, we're going. You want to go? Do you ever hear the guys do that? Do you ever hear the guys look at there and say, hey, man, i got to go to the restroom. You want to go with me? They don't do that. We're just a peculiar bunch of people, aren't we? We really are. But God is so good. And we're going to rise up, aren't we? We're going to rise up and we're going to take control of our lives. And tonight, I want to share a scripture with you. It's found in Exodus um, chapter 20, verses 5 and 6. And I told you last night I was going to tell you about how you can rise up, but sometimes you have to leave your shoe behind That's right. before you can rise up. How many Amen. of you remember the story of Cinderella? Amen. She lost a shoe. Uh -uh. Now, what would have happened? I, I'll never lose my shoes because I love my shoes. I am a shoe person. Boots. But what would happen? I love boots, too. I love them all. Like I said, they keep coming in my size, so you have to buy them, right? But what would have happened if Cinderella had turned around and ran back and picked up her shoe and taken it home with her? What would have happened? She would have never become a princess because the prince had to come. He had to find the shoe. You know how it goes. She had to find the shoe. He had to find it and find the woman that it belonged to. But that's what we're going to talk about tonight is how you can really rise up if you leave something behind. Sometimes we have to do that. Exodus 20, 5 and 6 says, You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the fourth, third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But, if you'll see the next verse, it says all of those things will be broken, won't be carried on, if or but, Showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your love and your grace and your mercy tonight. We're thankful for your word, Lord. And I'm thanking you tonight that we have the opportunity as women of God and the men that are here, Lord, that we can rise above our circumstances, that we can rise above those curses that have been put on us, and we can rise above the things, Lord, and our lives, Lord, that are trying to overcome us. We break through those barriers tonight in the name of Jesus. Have you ever wondered or ever experienced for yourself seeing people who they grow up in a home where the fathers maybe physically abuse the mothers and then these women go out and repeat the same pattern uh -huh. they have the same situation happen to them having been victims maybe of abuse as a child why do some women choose to knowingly marry men who continue to abuse having seen the effects of addiction uh, addiction in a parent why do some become addicted themselves? Right. Just like the story of the, of the father was an alcoholic and he had two sons. One became an alcoholic and one did not. Right. And they were asked, the one that was an alcoholic said, why did you become an alcoholic? And he said, because my father was. And when he asked the other one who was not an alcoholic, why did you never become an alcoholic? He had the same answer, because my father was. See, we, we have the power to break those Amen. things that Satan Amen. has tried to do to destroy our families and destroy our lives. We Amen. have that power tonight. Yes. Why do some people remain chained to <coughs> inherited ways of thinking and act out in the same old way over and over and over? Now, I think there's just some women in this situation, we're going to talk to the women, but I think there are some women that need to be told they're worthy. That's right. That they're loved. Amen. Not because nobody ever told them before, but because somebody told them they weren't. Come on. Amen. Now I'm going to repeat that. Right. Some okay. women need to be told that they are worthy. Yes. They need to be told that they're loved. Not because nobody ever told them they were, but it's because somebody told them they weren't. And see, we have to understand that words are very powerful. Yeah. And we were talked last night about speaking life. Right. This right here will get you in, either will bless you or curse you. After an episode of pain caused by acting out, what do we say? Oh, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. I'm never going to do it again. And then what happens? We turn around and we do it over 
and over and over. And we see people in our lives doing the same thing. I'm never going to do it again. I'm never going to do it again. And we do it over and we do it over. We, some of us have that problem with eating. <laughs> you know, we say, oh, I'm never going to eat that, other, that piece of pie like that again. I'm never going to do that. And what do we do? The next time I'm going to have a piece of pie. Got to have that pie. Or got to have that. Or got to have this. Yes. You know, it's always love. Yes. Chips and hot sauce. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> In our house, it's the chips and hot sauce. When they, when we go to a Mexican or Tex-Mex restaurant and they see Jeff coming, they hide the chips and hot sauce. Yes, they because do. Because he just go, you know, he loves them. It goes oh, on and on. So but good. we do things over and over and over. This is all a result of being chained. You're chained. And if, and if it's not broken, it's kind of like in a race where you pass the baton. Well, if there's some things that are not broken in your life, the baton of that self-destructive behavior is going to be carried down. It's going to be carried down. Warped ways of thinking and self-destructive behavior will become like your family heirlooms. Anybody have family heirlooms? We, we have a lot of family heirlooms. We have family heirlooms, you know. And we think they're a beautiful quilt or, you know, a beautiful piece of jewelry or something. But there are some other heirlooms that families carry that are not pretty. They're ugly. They're really ugly things. And we have to understand that there's a way to break that. A generational curse is when we practice the same sins of our forefathers. And these sinful behavioral patterns become ingrained within us. Uh -huh. There's one way to really break that. And you know what it is? It's to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and live for Him. You will break that line when that happens. When that happens, that curse is broken. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Of course, you know that once that's broken, if you willingly walk back into it, you pick it right back up again. Amen. You're going to be in a lot of trouble. The definition of insanity is repeating the same old negative pattern, believing that this time the results are going to be different. How many people like Charlie Brown? I like Charlie Brown. You know, oh, yeah. the thank, you know, the Thanksgiving special? Okay, what does he do every time in the Thanksgiving special? Anybody remember? There's one thing he does. Every time, Lucy yeah, does something to him. Football. The football. Every time. Like Charlie Brown believing that he just keeps trying to kick that football this one time. That Lucy won't pull it away at the last second. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And see him tumbling down on the ground every time. He's laying there in pain. But he does it every time, year after year, right? <laughs> he just keeps doing it. A person's spirit carries scars that exist because of family members' destructive habits. Yet, they'll repeat those same patterns, believing that they'll reap a different harvest. It won't happen. It doesn't happen. They either continue because the way their actions affect people. Now I'm going to say this, and, and, and you're going to hear this good. I hope you really open your ears to this. But they either continue their actions because the way they act affects people, but causes them to get what they want. Right. It causes them to be treated the way they want, to get what they want. That's not how you get true deliverance from something. Because of that, people really don't understand that God will take care of that. He'll help break that. I hate to say curse, but he'll break that curse on them. Amen. In order for people to be set free and stay free, what do they have to do? You have to do something first. You have to admit you've got a problem. Oh, yes. How many people don't want to admit that they have a problem today? Uh -huh. We live in a day and age, of, there's one word that we hear a lot, denial. That's right. People are in denial. No matter what has happened to us in our lives, each of us are responsible for the choices and the decisions that we make. If you really want to be free, you have to accept what? A responsibility. That is one reason why a lot of people don't grow in the Lord because they don't want to take on the responsibility that it takes to be where they need to be with the Lord. It takes a responsibility. It takes a choice. It takes a decision. If you really want to be free, you have to do that. Remember, you can't defeat your demons if you still enjoy their company. Oh. Okay? You can't defeat your demons if you're still enjoying their company. You can't do it. We
We all make mistakes, but after a while, continued mistakes become decisions. They're not a mistake anymore. People say, oh, I made a mistake. Okay, well, I understand that, you know, three or four times or whatever. But after a while, it becomes a choice. Yeah. They're making a choice to do that after a while. Yes. Now, just yes. because your father might not have been a good father, or your grandfather, or maybe your mother, or your grandmother, just because they never did things right, here's the beauty of the thing. How many remember the story in the Bible about Hezekiah? He was raised in a family of demon worshipers. Yes, he was. In a family full of rich craft that offered the children's blood as sacrifice to demon gods. But what did Hezekiah do? He said, just because they weren't good doesn't mean that I can't be good. So just because you have other people in your life or friends in your life that are not good doesn't mean you can't be good. Doesn't mean that you can't set the example. Hezekiah decided that he was going to be good. And after his father, King Ahaz's reign, Hezekiah boldly did something that I think we all need to do. He cleaned house. He cleaned house. He destroyed pagan altars, idols, and temples. He went to work. He didn't just say, I'm going to make a change in my life. I'm breaking that curse. I'm going to move on. We're going to make a difference here. My family's going to be different. He did something about it. He did something about it. Just because your family members couldn't hold maybe their marriages together or that they have addiction in their life or they've been to prison or there's bondage or there's debt, nobody's happy and nobody wins, doesn't mean that you can't be. It doesn't mean that you can't be happy. I'm telling you, I'm not under the curse. Amen. I'm living under the blessing of the Amen. Lord. Yeah. And we need to proclaim that tonight. We are not living under the curse, Amen. that we are living under the blessing. And we need to proclaim that tonight. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm living under the blessing. And my blessing, and I want you to think about that and repeat. You tell that yourself that. I'm living under the blessing of God, and my blessing begins here and now tonight. Yes. I'm Amen. not having another day of curse on my life. Nothing Amen. can stop what God has ordained. God loves you too much Amen. to leave you in any other state but glorious. Amen. He wants you to be glorious. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to walk with him. He wants you to talk with him. And, you know, I, I was thinking, and I've, I've preached this before many, many times, when people realize, you know, things in their life that don't matter and, you know, what you have in your home and, and, and movies you watch and things that you do and places that you go, they don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Just, you know, just do fun. You know, it's all right. But it does matter. We need to be careful what we're allowing into our gates. Amen. The eye gate, the ear gate, the mouth gate. We need to be very careful what we are allowing into Amen. our minds. Yeah. And if you have uh, children at home, you're responsible. To make sure that those minds stay clean and pure. You know, don't allow it in your home. <laughs> don't allow it in your home. You better clean up your house. Amen. Get your house clean tonight. And, you know, you can, sometimes we get upset. You know, we just don't know what to do. And we need to understand we need to take up the cross. And, and the curse can't get, come back to our house. Mm -hmm. Once we do that, it can't. But see, you can't keep getting mad at people for sucking the life out of you when you keep handing them the straw. Oh my. You just can't do it because there's people, you know, you, you keep doing that with people, don't you? You keep doing that. And you keep getting mad about the way people are doing you and, and everything, but you just keep handing them the straw just to suck the life out of you. Ruth didn't go back to what was familiar. She stepped out in faith and she walked into the unknown. Her courage brought her to her divine Destiny, but so when you st make a stand to go forward for the Lord, don't look back. That's right. Go forward, always forward for the Lord. Don't don't look back and don't think, but well, the way I used to be. But you know, it's kind of like people. We we've all at one time or another received a word of promise from the Lord. You get a promise from the Lord, but because of living under that curse, we say, oh, "I'll never happen to me. That's not going to happen to me. I know that ain't going to happen." And in so doing, we take this promise that God has given us, we wrap it up in grave clothes, and we bury it. Uh -huh. That's exactly what we do. We just bury it somewhere. But we must do what Jesus did. Like I said last night, call that dead thing alive. 
Call yeah. it back to life. Yeah. You know, we have to understand that, you know, sometimes there are promises the Lord gives us, and if he doesn't do it today, you give up. Right. If God's promised you something, stand on it. Speak on it. God's promised that. He's promised that. You know, and speak life into things. <laughs> How many of you women have ever had to speak life into something that was broken in your home? I remember years ago, we one of our washing machine broke, you know, back in the years in the parsonage, and we didn't have a lot of money to fix appliances and everything, and I prayed over our washing machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really yeah. did. I mean, I prayed over the washing machine. I said, Lord, we don't have the money to get a new washing machine. We need to fix this one, something, you know, we need to get this fixed. And whether it was just, you know, somebody knowing how to fix it or just something happening, like a car you were hit. Ever, anybody ever lay hands on your car? I've done that before. <laughs> lay, lay hands on my car and say, Lord, you gotta, this car's got to work. And there's things in our life that are broken. <coughs> and they need to be fixed. And as women of God, we can speak life into those things, and we can claim the promises, break the curses, and take on those promises that God has given us. You can do it. Jesus has called us to do it. But guess what? He's called you because he gave you a fingerprint yes, he did. that nobody else has. Right. No other person has your fingerprint. That's right. And he gave us that so we can leave an imprint in this world that no one else can. Mm -hmm. See, you can make a difference in somebody's life that somebody else can't. Right. You never know who you're going to run into that you're going to be required to minister to. And so you got to have everything right where you need it with the Lord, for sure. We need to speak life into that thing that's happening in our life that's coming against us. Call it forth. Rebuke and break the curses and speak life. Watch that thing that you once called dead come out of the grave and shed those grave clothes and come to life. Something that you said would never happen for you. Think about it. This week, start doing that. Speak life into that circumstance. Exercise this, and I'm going to say this one word that we forget as Christians. We put it on a back shelf, we wrap it up, and that word is authority. That's right. We have authority. Yes. We have authority that God has given us to declare that our seed will live. Come on. We have to speak blessings in our family. Yes. And we have to remember that we're the head and not the tail. But in order to do that, we have to recognize it, then we have to repent, and we have to bring that gener break that generational sin. But see, that one word, repent, nobody wants to do that today, do they? Yep. See, that's what our problem is. We've got to go back to where we started into repentance. God will restore everything the enemy stole from you. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. And your latter will be greater than your former. Yeah. He's going to restore it. Believe that in Christ, with Christ and through Christ, your destiny, yours, is greater than your drama. How many of you just love drama? Yeah. I don't like it. When Jeff and I got married, he told me this. He said, I just want to be happy, and I don't want to have any drama, and I want to have a lot of peace. Because his life was full of no peace and lots of drama <laughs> for years. So he didn't want that. And um, I think we've tried to, to manage that, haven't we, dear? We've tried to live with a lot of peace and no drama. Amen. Once in a while, we have a little bit. Everybody does, right? Amen. But we try to live like that. We try to, 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 to put those things behind us that would try to hinder us. And, um, you know, as, as Dr. Wood says in a, a lot of times, you know, those things are just a hindrance. Amen. Talk about things hindering you and hindering your life. And, we got to get rid of those things. But God will restore everything the enemy has stolen from you. Yes, Remember that. Believe it in Christ and with Christ and through Christ. Your destiny will be greater than your drama. Your promise will silence the problem. Yes, he will. Because your miracle will redeem the mistakes. Mm -hmm. When that miracle takes place in your life, that everything will be redeemed. Oh, yes. Your drama will put it, your dream will put an end. Mm -hmm to the nightmare, and your blessing will overtake the brokenness. That's what I want to tell you tonight, is the things in your life that you can have, just think about the blessings that will come to overtake the areas that you feel broken in. 
Breaking freedom from generational sins and curses is part of how we realize the gift God has given us, the passion he's given us, and the truth he's given us of who we Amen. are in him. So we have to know who we are in him, right? Right. And we, you know, we talked about that last night. Jeff's going to preach on that tomorrow, on identity crisis, really knowing who you are. The divine hand of God is leading you into the spiritual destiny yeah. that was sculptured before you even took your first breath. Amen. Before you even took your first breath, God had a plan for you. Oh, yes. So I want you to know, as, as Christians, but as women of God, hold your head up. Amen. Put your shoulders back and roll like the boss that you were called to be. Woo! You need to do that. You need to take that authority. Be the boss that God destined you to be. I want you to be a girl with a mind, a woman with an attitude, and a lady with class. Be a woman who's also a warrior, who gets up despite the enemy trying to be destroy you. Be a woman who declares victory before even seeing yes. it. Wow. Be a woman who believes she'll receive her miracle before you know the God you serve is alive. You know he's powerful. You know he can yes. do it. I'm going to declare to you today sudden restoration. Oh. I declare to you as, as a church family sudden deliverance. Lord. Sudden defeat over your enemies and a sudden wow. outpouring of God's spirit yes. on every one of you tonight. Yeah. Women, men, children, every one of you. We've got to do that. Where you are today is not an accident. God's using the situation you're in right now to shape you and prepare you for the place that he wants you to be tomorrow. Trust him with his plan, even if you don't understand it. Wow. You know, that's, that's pretty profound because it's hard sometimes to use that word trust. Just trust his plan even when we don't understand it. There's plenty of times I don't understand what's going on. You ask God, you don't know. What, why, what's the reason? What's going on? You don't understand it. So if we can't understand it, we think, oh, oh God's not going to work it out for me because I don't understand it. Woo! We can't do that because God's in control. He has the plan. We're in control of what God, you have to understand that. See, he gives us a free will, so we're in control of the decisions that we make. God's not up there taking you, making you do something. We, we make decisions. And I have to tell you that not all the time do we make the best ones. We need to pray for protection. In this day and age, more than any other, we need to pray for protection over our children. And we need to pray for protection over our household and our loved ones. That every weapon... The enemy would attempt to form is dismantled. Amen. Dismantled. Oh, yeah. Broken down before it can ever happen. Let every snare and every trap be exposed and bring a supernatural deliverance with great testimonies. Great. Wouldn't you love to have people coming in? Pastor Mark every Sunday with a great testimony about, you know, them declaring, declaring victory over something, how God worked in their life. That's what we want to hear. We need to block. And I'm telling you tonight, we need to be aggressive and take authority. And you need to block any aggressive spirit by the power of the blood. And we need to take authority in the name of Jesus and rebuke any attacks on our minds, on our dreams, and on our hearts. Because he will attack you. He'll attack your mind. He will attack your heart. He'll attack your dreams. He'll try to break it all down. We need to pray for the Lord to guard our hearts and protect us with his blood. We need to pray to break the chains that are constricting in the name of Jesus. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to let us feel his presence once again and the overwhelming peace and comfort it will bring. Now, I, I want to have, if those that are willing to do this, I would like for every woman, every lady in this church to come up and stand across the front. Just go ahead and come up and just stand across the front. And I just want us to do some declarations tonight. And I want you to know that you have the power and you have authority. You have the authority. And brother, if you would come and play something. Amen. You have authority tonight, ladies. You have what it takes. You know, when's the last time that you really, you really had the feeling that you were truly loved, that you were truly respected, you know, that you really felt good, everybody in your family, you know, and if I were to ask you that, you say, well, yeah, I think they do. How many times have you say, if I asked you, how many of you don't feel so great about yourself? 
How many of you had, have family members that maybe have made you feel like low? <laughs> not, you know, not where you need to be. You don't feel like you have any authority over them. And the things that are happening in your life. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that can change tonight. We need to ask the Lord and we need to believe. I'm going to ask you, how many of you women tonight, and there's men here too that want to answer, how many of you truly believe that God has given you the power and the authority to break every curse Amen. that's tried Amen. to come against Amen. you and your family? I, you need to believe that. You can't receive it unless you believe it. We need to receive it, and suddenly when you start receiving that, the legal grounds of the enemy is revoked tonight. He, he can't even come into your home. He can't come into your life. He doesn't have the authority. It's revoked. As of tonight, it's revoked. Place a hedge of protection around us, God, and our families. And I think this is our only young lady here tonight, right? All right, Catherine. Let me just speak to you just for a minute, okay? I have a granddaughter, and I have a couple of bonus. Well, I have four bonus granddaughters, but I have one granddaughter that's my blood granddaughter, and she's precious. And I want to tell you something, okay? We, as women of God, we, we have to pray for the Lord to protect you, for the Lord to keep his hand over you. Believe God can do that tonight? I believe he can, and I believe he will. But I want to tell you, we have to pray for God to protect you because we have a responsibility as women of God to do that. Because I want to tell you something. This is a, a pretty nasty world, right? And uh, boys can be pretty nasty sometimes. Oh, she's shaking her head. Yeah, how old are you? How old are you? Well, brothers are uh, brothers can be kind of. Uh, yeah, I had brothers. She's nine. Okay. We have to pray for God to protect her. And I want you to know something. Tonight. God loves you, and you are precious in His sight. You belong to him. Nothing can come against you. Because we're going to pray that it won't. Because as you grow up and you get older, you know, you're going you're to have boys that are going to tell you how pretty you are. And just for one kiss, you're beautiful. And I think you're beautiful, so I just need one kiss. You know what? You know what a throat punch is? Okay. Throat punch. But as we pray tonight, we are going to pray. Let's pray that God will protect this young woman. We got teenagers. Oh my goodness. Well, that's it, y'all. We're going to do the same thing. Because you know what? The same thing. You know how to throw punch a boy? Well, let me show you how. Come up here, Jeff. <laughs> throw punch him. Yeah. Keep yourself, keep yourself that's what we're praying. That's what we want. We're going to pray no harm come against her, these young women. We want that hedge of protection. God will give us divine protection. And I want you to declare from this night forward, no more losses in your life. No more losses. Only blessings. Blessings. And we're going to pray tonight for you. And I want, I want you to do something with me. I have a proclamation. And I want you to repeat it after me. Okay? I want you to say, God is taking me to pleasant places. God is taking me to pleasant yes. places. He is decorating my feet. He is decorating my feet. With his peace. With his peace. And anointing. And anointing. I will crush.
tomorrow the Lord will have more of a word. Uh, because as I'm listening to the song that Jeff is singing, and this is a familiar song to me, in fact, the last Bible study, uh, we use this very same song. But the word of the Lord is that the chains are broken. Yes. The, the word of the Lord is that there is an army that is already a yes. There is a rising element, a rising remnant. Yes. He has always had a, a rising element, a remnant that's arising. Yes. Just think about Gideon, think about all of those in the book of Judges. He all, Jesus himself was a remnant, and he rose up 12, and now a billion. The chains are broken. He'll have an army. He'll have a remnant. The question to this church and every church and every person, will you be in that rising remnant that ushers in the return of the Lord? Because we are the Elijah generation that will bring back Elisha, Jesus Christ into the earth. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! This is
wants to brag on you, Kevin. Come on up there to Pastor, to Sister Rosa. Ladies, Pastor. I love this young lady. She's got an awesome, awesome anointing yeah. on her voice. World better look out. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. We've enjoyed having you tonight. We hope that you will join us again in the morning. We got Brother Jeff Tyway. Did I say that right? Wall. Okay. That's it right? Stirwall. Wrong one. He's going to bless his soul. Go ahead. I'm just going to show We're never going to get it right. That's it. All right. Brother Jeff's going to bring the word for us in the morning, and I'm sure yes. you'll be blessed. If you were not here last night or you did not get one of these, you are more than welcome to take one home. We also have keychains back in the basket on this little table that you're more than welcome to have as well. Um, if you didn't see the banquet set up out there, it's beautiful it. tonight. You want to it's take a look. out there. Brother Bobby's cleaned up everything out there. Aww. Oh, Thanks. give Brother Bobby a hand. He's the one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to say to Sister Denise, thank you so much. Oh, wow. Thank you for the words Amen. of the Lord that you brought both nights. Thank you so much. It's just the beginning for you, sis. Oh, yeah. Yes. No one is You hear your hear this pastor? It's just the beginning. Not your pastor. Sorry. Sorry, Brady. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, it's just the beginning. And God's got a special plan. Say amen. And uh, just one more thing, because I, I just keep on feeling this in my spirit tonight, is that, you know, like much like a puzzle, sometimes our life feels like it's in a million pieces. And as you get that puzzle out of that box, you start forming the frame, and you start putting piece by piece in. And as the pieces come together, they start to form a picture. They start to form a resemblance of what the front of the box is supposed to look like. <laughs> and what I just keep on sensing in the spirit is your life may feel like it's in a million pieces right now. It may feel like it doesn't make sense right now. But God is putting in the pieces. He's putting in the pieces. So you can reflect the maker of who made you. I don't know who that's for, but it's for somebody. I just sense that in the Holy Spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus, somebody just receive that. Your life doesn't make sense, but God's putting the pieces in place, and he's going to show you the purpose, and he's going to show you the reason. He's going to show you everything you need to know. Just hang on to him. You may not see crystal clear right now, but in the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to see clearly once the smoke blows away, once all the tears dry up, once all the clouds roll away, and once the sun starts to shine once again in your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> we need some prayer warrior ladies around Sister Karen. Come on over there. Let's just, let's just play his number. Sister, there's a release right now. 
In the name of Jesus. Sister Karen, there's a release right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a release right now, Sister Karen. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Father God. Oh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Jesus, right now, Father. Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus.
give the glory, the glory and honor to our God. Give praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless praise and bless bless you tonight. Father God, we bless you, we praise you. We honor you tonight, Father. We thank you for the lives and the hearts that you touched here tonight, Father. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Lord Jesus, right now we thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord God Almighty. God bless you.